Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. Today we're going to be working on doing the brakes on an MTD FNR transmission. Usually you can sell, you can tell what the MTDs are because they'll usually have what people call a seven speed shift. It actually isn't seven speeds. What it is is a very drive, but that's for another video. Um, what we're going to cover today is the power wheel build unfortunately has a locked up brake system and we're going to rebuild it today. So. Let's get it torn apart. It's over in this area, so we're gonna move the camera. Okay, here's our transmission as it sits in the tractor. It's been flipped up on the side for the power wheel build. Normally, it would be sitting with this side facing down towards the ground. And the brake assembly that you're after would be facing towards the right hand side if you're sitting in the tractor. What you're going to need to do is you're probably going to need to disengage the spring which goes down through this and connects onto the arm that's on the back of here and actuates this lever. Once you get that disassembled, you're going to need a couple of parts to rebuild this. The first of which is you'll need the brake rotor itself. I'll include the Amazon link for this, but the model number is 761. 0202 02. and MTD does not call them brake pads they call them brake pucks the model number is 9170678 and they're sold in singles so you're going to have to buy two of them if your pads are really worn out on each side I'm sorry puck MTD calls them pucks so the goal of this is that most of the time when these brakes like end up locking up, it's because of the fact that the two piston dowels that are on the inside end up seized up. And there's a metal plate that goes in front of these and you need to be careful when you take it off. So the first thing we're going to do is get a hold of our wrench and it is a 3 8 on each side. These bolts are really long. So just go ahead and undo those. For anyone having issues with adjusting your brakes later, that would be this nut right here, and it would be a half an inch. If you go in, in this direction, your brakes get tighter. If you go out, in this direction, your brakes get looser. So we're gonna undo these, and then go from there. Now remember when you take off the one that's right here, that it does have the spring assembly associated with it. As you can see here, the spring comes forward and drives the lever back into the neutral position. So be careful about that, that you don't accidentally disengage it. Now what's going to happen here is if we tip it, the puck falls out and the plate that I told you about earlier falls out with it. On the inside, we can see the pistons and I'm betting that if we try and actuate the lever that nothing happens. As you saw earlier, those should be free floating and they're not. So in just a sec, we'll get back to that. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our rotor off, which just free floats like such. As you can see, this one had scours in it it wasn't hitting on certain areas. The other side actually has blatant spots missing. You can pull your pad out. Sorry, MTD, puck. And usually this will be the side that's actually scoured thinner, which is why I just bought a singular one so that I could put it in here. Right now we're gonna open that up. And we're going to open up our rotor. So, we put our brake puck into there. Rotor goes on with the nub side facing out, like such. Now, one thing that you really should do, and I'm going to do off camera, is put anti-seize up and down all of these, spl all of these splines. And from here, we're going to take the caliper and we're going to tear it down and rebuild it. Okay, so at this point, 
we have our two nuts that we've kept in and yet again the reason we did that was so that we could hold the spring and make sure everything was there so we're going to pull these both out as you can see they're both the same length they both have a washer on them so it really doesn't matter which side they go in next that adjustment that we were talking about before count the number of threads in order to set it back to where it was factory do keep in mind if your pucks were worn out then this will be slightly tighter than it needs to be when you put brand spanking new ones in so from here we're going to loosen this up now this spring sits with a nub going down into the caliper on this side so you should be able to rock everything back and forth and have the whole assembly come off in one unit like such now at this point we can access the pistons which are totally stuck and immobile now you can do this a couple of ways you can set it across the back of a vise like this and you can drive these through with a hammer or something of that nature another method that i have discovered you can do is you can set it into a vise like this at a kitty corner and then allow the vise to press it in but sometimes it's a little bit too harsh and it starts to bite in on the aluminum so either way spray it down with some penetrating oil see what you can do to drive them back through there we go that one came loose without any issue as you can see that pressed in so apparently this is the one that was causing the problems now one thing that I will point out if you end up needing to drive it back through the opposite direction so you're going from this direction through is you can put that on so that you won't end up hitting on your thread and then you can tighten that up and set it on either side of the clamp and that gives you the ability to hit down through okay so that sides out there's one so the other one we just need to rock back and forth once or twice more and as you can see that one is blatantly rusted so we're gonna grab some sandpaper preferably something about the 600 grit category but anything that gets the rust off decently is gonna be your big thing and then you'll probably want some anti-seize or something along those lines we're going to loop them up get them back in and make sure they're free floating all right so at this point we've gone over these with some 600 grit and taken all the big areas off and we've got our anti-seize so we're just going to take and do the tip and take the tip and push it back through just like that and yet again take the tip and push it back through and from here you should be able to go back and forth nice and easy as you can see they both free float through there so from here you can clamp it back in take this off and now we're going to rebuild it as if somebody was dumb and didn't set stuff aside the way they should have so we've got all of our parts all right so now that we've got it mounted into the vise if you look you can see that there's a notch that'll be worn from this going into it and you can see where that would have been hitting on the piece of metal so this is going to sit like this that's going to go over the top 
and this is going to go down in the notch. So one, two, and drop in three. So one, two, drop in for three. So now that this is on, we've got to put our washer on and then our metal piece. Take your long bolt, put it down through your other long bolt and the other side. And if you listen to me earlier, you counted how many threads were above this as your pre-start mark. In my case, it was about four. And right about there. So, now we're going to go put it back on after we put our puck in. Alright, so here we are. We've got our caliper. And we're going to make sure this goes this direction. So we've got the plate that goes in. And our absolutely beautiful MTD puck. And we're going to slide that on. And this is where it gets cute because inevitably the puck won't stay in. Sometimes you have to loosen up the adjuster. And it just gets fun. So let the two long bolts free float. Press it in as good as you can. And then from there, hand thread them. Because you are putting steel into an aluminum case, so you don't want to cross thread and ruin things. And there we go. Sometimes it can take some playing going back and forth before you finally get them to settle in. Especially if it's an older caliper. And again, you are going into aluminum, so don't over tighten. From here on out, you've got your spring connection that's on the back up here. And as said before, if you tighten this, your brake engages sooner. If you loosen it, it engages later. Have fun, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of my how-tos.